Hello everyone. The topic I want to discuss today is the topic of being grateful in spite of your suffering, suffering silently, remaining resilient and calm even when life throws you curveballs, and bearing the cross, which is a kind of a Christian perspective. So, well, let me first highlight why I want to talk about this. So, Five days a week, I head to Western Michigan University's engineering campus. I currently am an industrial engineer at Western. And I, I interact with many people at Western, many students and many professors. But one thing that kind of sparked my thought of wanting to talk about this is I typically since I'm kind of a social guy, I'll ask people how they're doing. I'll run into people, run into students in the computer lab or just in class, and I was like, and I ask, how's it going? What, what's up? And sometimes people respond, doing great, doing well, ready for this class, you know, positive. But then I also run into people who say, Oh, I'm terrible. I didn't get very much sleep. I'm not ready for this class. This class sucks. Oh, it's so much work. Or like a similar response to that. And to me, I, that I'm not incentivized to ask them next time how they're doing or what, what's going on because I'm not interested in hearing that kind of response of, oh, things are going terribly. I'm so tired, I'm, I'm so stressed, all of that. Even though that might be true, I don't think it's useful to even be said, especially in a small talk type, just quick discussion. And, but maybe that's just my opinion. But I, was, I met this guy named Alex, who's a few years younger than me, but honestly, I would have never guessed he was younger because his maturity level is very high. So, But he's a freshman, and... He asked me what characteristics I look up to in a person, and I had a few responses, but one of the, my responses was, I look up to people who, when life throws curveballs and when life gets tough, they have an attitude of gratitude and they remain calm and they bear the responsibility suffering silently without complaint. And those kind of people are the kind of people I look up to because life is suffering. Every one of us has tough events and tough situations that occur. Some of us have tougher events than others, and sometimes tragedy strikes. But there is something to be said about someone who can, even in a terrible situation, who can stand firm and who can remain a force for good and a force for positivity and a force of resilience because people really look up to people like that and who are you going to go to when there's this when there's an emergency are you going to go to the person who's always complains about small assignments and having to do a little bit of extra work and are you going to go to that kind of person or are you going to go to the person who even in the longest and toughest assignments or the hardest things at work or the worst situations in a in, a, in the worst situations, who remain calm and who get and bear that responsibility. Are you going to go to the first or the second? I'd say you're probably going to go to the second, the people who can remain calm and resilient. And so when I'm asking all of these people at the engineering campus how they're doing, and, and a lot of them are responding by, oh, uh, it sucks, oh, I'm so tired, oh. And I'm like, people really need to wake up. I, we have so much to be grateful for living in this country, America. At least you could go fill up your water bottle like 10 steps away with the nice water bottle filler. You didn't have to walk two miles to go fill up your water jug for the day and for, for your whole family. It's like, bro, I, people, people complain about the smallest things and I feel like people these days, maybe just this is my experience at Western, but people my age will get in this feedback loop of, oh, I have this terrible thing and it sucks, yeah, yeah, complain. And then this other person who comes and, 
and then they're like, yeah, my situation is terrible too, and I'm going to complain as well. And it's like, oh, that sucks, and oh, yeah, that does suck. And it's just this back and forth of complaint and lack of gratitude and zero positivity. And I like to be the kind of person who flips that on your head and says, well, at least we have the opportunity to learn about the things that we're learning when completing this assignment. Or at least we have the opportunity to adapt in this business environment. It's like, I'm just, I want to encourage people to flip that attitude of poor me, self-pity, complaining, resentment even sometimes, and flip that into an attitude of, calm, collected, resilient, and courageous. And there's, there's not that many people who have that type of perspective, especially at the age of 20 or 21. But I think, I think if this message gets out and people start listening to this, I feel like people can really make a shift and it's worth it to make that shift and I'll explain why. Well, let me first talk about let me here's a quote that I found we don't always have control of the events that occur in our lives but we do have control over how we react and approach problems and situations and that is very very true not always are you gonna get what you want there's a beautiful song by the Rolling Stones called you can't always get what you want and I honestly I like that song because it's a good song, but I also love the song because of the message. It shows that you aren't always going to get what you want. Things aren't going to go your way all the time. But you can control how you react. You can control what kind of attitude you have towards that situation that just occurred. Are you going to be the person who's complaining the entire time? when you, Or are you going to be the person who realizes that there has to be a shift in your actions, and you make that shift, and you move on? It's like... It's worth it to take that second approach. It really, it's worth it for, for school, work, life, re relationships, anything. And so I was looking up some videos on this idea of stoicism, which is kind of just the idea, like I've been trying to explain, which is remaining calm, suffering silently, and being a force for courage and good and truth and wisdom. But here are the cardinal values of someone who enacts the qualities of a stoic first quality or first virtue wisdom the ability to navigate complex situations in a logical and informed manner you're going to be put you're going to be pushed into situations that are complex life is insanely complex but if you approach these complex situations with with logic and collectiveness and, and in a questioning manner, like, what can I learn from this? How are we going to do this? What are the pros and cons of this? Instead of, oh, it all sucks. It's like, no, let's take a rational approach that analyzes what the pros and cons of this situation are, what the pros and cons of each different action that you could take are, and, and people are going to look up to you for that. It's like, when, when you're in a group, a group project, and you, you're, you're pushed this assignment that's incredibly complex, you then have to analyze it and you have to be wise in your decision making. And so I agree with that, that virtue of wisdom. The second virtue of a stoic is someone who has temperance, which the definition of that is the ability to exercise self-restraint and moderation in life. I guess it's kind of a being able to control yourself in any situation and and hold yourself accountable and set limits on yourself and and say no and those kind of ideas the third virtue of a stoic justice treating others with fairness even if they do you wrong and this is somewhat like a Christian idea, I look up to Jesus quite a lot for how he acted out the idea of justice. People treated him pretty poorly and said mean things and hurt him very badly, but 
he still treated them as if they had divine value and as if they were someone he could learn from and were someone that was very important. And, and that's what I try to do as well. It's the idea of, well, forgiveness and forgetting, not maybe not forgetting, but forgiveness and, and respect for those, even if they've done you wrong or if they've done wrong because we've all done wrong. All right, the fourth virtue of a Stoic is someone who has courage, and they define that as facing daily challenges with clarity and integrity. And you're going to face challenges daily, that's for sure. And are you going to approach them? Are you going to be scared of the challenge? Oh, I got this big essay to finish or I have to do this presentation for my boss and I'm just I'm terrified of that and you might be terrified but clinical psychology suggests that when you have a, a metaphorical monster under your bed or skeleton in your closet the best approach to slaying those dragons and monsters is by facing those situations head-on with courage and with truth and that's exactly what this is talking about where it's like how are we going to approach these challenges are we gonna are we gonna complain and and be scared and be worried and be resentful that we have to do that or are we gonna be courageous positive and excited to learn what we're gonna have to learn when doing this and and courageous to put ourselves out there and and pr do the task and so those are the, I'm not certain why they're called the cardinal virtues of a Stoic, but that's what they called them. All right, now I'm going to transition to this book called Man in Search of Meaning by Viktor Frankl. I actually talked about that with Nate Winky on the last podcast. And so the idea is, Viktor Frankl was actually a Jew in the 1940s and he was put in the concentration camps of Nazi Germany and he realized that even in living in one of the worst situations imaginable having to have maybe a sliver of bread a day dig trenches in the snow with your bare hands and be beaten and tortured daily he realized that that one can harness the willpower to, wait, sorry. We can harness our willpower to fill our lives with meaning even in the worst situations. He, he acted, he, even though he was in one, objectively, one of the worst situations in human history, he was able to withstand that and get through that with his attitude, his stoic-like attitude, which was the attitude of, still remaining grateful for what you have, sacrificing for others, and standing up for what's true and what is good, helping those who might need the extra, extra hand instead of being a, a force for, for evil and conforming to what the Nazi guards were doing to the others. You stood up for what is good, and, and that meaning that he got in that environment was honestly probably what kept him alive. He journaled about it as during his time and that's what the book Man's Search of Meaning is and I really recommend that book. It will give you some perspective and it will help you remain grateful and resilient in tough situations because most likely you won't e endure a situation that terrible. Who knows though but it just it shows you that with the correct attitude you can get through pretty much anything and I really thought that, that this book was a great point to bring up in this episode. And so next, I want to talk about this Christian idea of, of taking up your cross daily. And for those who don't know, Jesus, he, he acted in truth and in love per, always, and but he was chosen by the people he was surrounded by to be crucified. So cr he had to pick up this heavy cross, walk it all the way up to the hill to be beaten, tortured, and then ultimately nailed to the cross and hung there for multiple days. And 
And so metaphorically, what that means for all of us is that each day you're going to be forced to face different types of challenges and tough situations, and you're going to suffer. But what Jesus kind of is highlighting in his actions here is that we have to take up that cross. We have to bear that responsibility. We have to shoulder all of that up and hold it ourselves and, and do it and sacrifice yourself for others. And, and you will actually be a force for good in, in other people's lives and in your own. And, you will make the world a better place with that attitude of bearing responsibility without complaint, suffering silently, and being grateful in spite of your suffering. And, and the only people who can actually truly positively influence others are those who can remain composed in tough situations and can bear lots of responsibility without complaint. And so, I just... I take in that idea of taking up your cross daily and bearing that responsibility and suffering silently. I, I try to enact that in life. I try my best not to complain about small things or be resentful about having to do a project. I try to flip it on my head, on its head, because yeah, it, being grateful in those kind of moments it is incredibly therapeutic for you. It also provides positive results in what you're trying to accomplish. And it also, it allows you to be an anchor for others. And so I'm going to move to this next point. So there's this idea of being able to stand strong, even at your father's funeral, so that those who need a shoulder to lean on can lean on you. And this this doesn't mean that at a funeral, you, you shouldn't be sad or shouldn't be grief-stricken because that's just, that's reality and it's healthy that you are. But metaphorically, it means that do you have the composure and the attitude on life that will allow you to get through tough situations and also be a help to those who are not doing as well in that moment? Can you be that shoulder to lean on? Can you be that anchor of the community? And, and it just goes back to that first point about the whole people at the engineering campus. In a tough situation or in an emergency or in a death, are you going to go to the person who was constantly complaining and pitying them, himself or herself? Or are you going to go to the person who remained collected and bared responsibility without complaining? And, and so that's, all, that's my goal as well in these tough situations, whether it be a funeral, whether it be an emergency, whether it be a loss of a job, whether it be anything like that, remaining strong and, and anchor-like so that people can lean on you, that's, that's a virtue that I'm attempting to strive for. And, and going back to that father's funeral metaphor where it's like, were you, are you able to stand up and speak about the memories that you had with your father and the grat and and how grateful you are that you were to that you had the ability to share a relationship with him or are you going to say or are you going to not be able to speak up because you're resentful that life has taken your dad from you or or death has taken your dad from you or anger or resentment or are you going to bear that suffering and stand up with your shoulders back and your... Yeah. So, I'm getting a lot of these ideas from Jordan Peterson, but I'm kind of bringing my own experience and my own twist onto it. And finally, I'll, I'd like to talk about what my mom would always say. She said it just the other day. She says, when the t going gets tough, the tough get going. And... It's this idea of when life smacks you, the tough people are those who smack it back and act and adapt. And it, my mom and I were trying to solve this business problem and I was honestly getting kind of annoyed and I was kind of complaining and my mom threw that phrase at me, 
when the going gets tough, the tough get going, and and she's very she's right. It it takes a tough person to get through these tough situations, but do you want to be someone who is known as a coward or someone who is courageous and could act even through those tough situations? And she would also say, buckle down. Like, hmm, you got a tough situation in front of you? Buckle down and get it done and do it without complaint. And, and then I'm going to talk about what my dad would always say. Well, he would just highlight the importance of remaining positive. I remember him telling stories of him at work, and someone would be complaining about something, or they'd be complaining that, oh, we gotta redo all this work, or, and then he would always, he'd always try to, like he said, like I was just said, flip it on its, its head. Try to, it's like, okay, yeah, we have to redo all this work. Oh, well, at least we're getting paid the same, and at least we get, at least we have a job, and at least we can, learn what how to improve and he's just he's very good at remaining positive and and not complaining I haven't really seen him complain much in life and I really look up to him for that and I'm trying to model my life around that same ideal so yeah that's that's pretty much it for today I I want to encourage everyone to Take a moment and write down what they're grateful for. And also, in tough situations, try to remember these types of values that I was just highlighting. Remaining calm, collected. Being grateful in spite of your suffering. Taking on the burden, even for others. Sacrificing. And staying resilient. And I believe in you all. You can do it. Alright. Adios. Thanks for sticking around to the end of this episode. If you found this discussion meaningful or engaging, feel free to give me a rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, comment on YouTube. Share this with your friends. If you found it meaningful, I'm sure they would too. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great rest of your day.